crazy, bro. They buffed the Technomancer. I can't even believe it. The Borealis Monarch set is fixed. Finally, it took a while. I have never successfully managed to kill the final Broodmother on Colosseum before it landed on the ground. Pretty, pretty spicy damage output if I do say so. Myself. <laughs> We got our patch. I'm pretty excited about it. Some cool quality of life improvements. I don't really want to talk about the patch too much because it is boring. Let's go over what's really important. The Technomancer Borealis Monarch set got buffed. They finally fixed the set bonus, taking it from a piece of garbage set that does nothing for you to one of the best sets in the game. And that's what we're going to cover in this video. We shall discuss the pros and cons of the Technomancer Cryo Toxic Freeze build, the skill tree, the skills used, and of course, the gear to make this build build pop. If at any point in time you like this video, you like the soothing sound of my sweet, supple voice, feel free to click that like button, click that comment button, click that subscribe button. I appreciate it. Trying to grow this channel. Creeping up on 1,000 subs. Let's get cracking. Pros and cons of this build. I absolutely think the Technomancer is the most boring class in this game, only because your damage output is far far too highly tuned. I thought they were intentionally not fixing the Borealis Monarch set because the Technomancer did not need any more damage output. It was already ridiculous, but they finally fixed it and it is now badass to use this set. They reworked it. It is no longer 90% bonus weapon damage against targets that are frozen. That would have definitely been too powerful in this game. Bonus weapon damage is a huge buff because it is modified by every single buff on your character whereas the flat bonus damage is only applied at the very end and cannot be manipulated to get humongous disgusting dirty damage numbers with this setup you can really just blow through any sort of challenge tier 15 you want <laughs> it's, it's just lethal it's absolutely incredible we leaned into a long range setup for this one and i have to say I really kind of miss the Technomancer. <laughs> it's so, so, so simple to play. The Technomancer is just as squishy, if not squishier than the Trickster, but because you just melt everything before it can even touch you, you don't even have to worry about dying, and that's firmly going to go into the pros column. And another thing that's cool is you get to use the Borealis Monarch set, which I've always thought is absolutely stunningly beautiful. I love this set, and to have it work to its full capacity is really nice. They did put an asterisk on the patch notes because it's people can fly and things tend to go awry. That rhymed uh, with, <laughs> with every new patch. And they said that sometimes the damage bonus doesn't work. If that happens to you, take a piece of the Borealis Monarch set off so you lose the bonus and then put that gear back on. They said this should fix it. And I personally have used this workaround to fix my issues. I would recommend that you just pay attention to your damage numbers. You can see for me when it falls below 1.2 million damage critical hits on elites, I know it is broken and I take the gear off and put it back on. All right, that's enough chit chat. Let's get down to brass tacks. For this setup, we are going to be using Blighted Rounds because no shit Sherlock, Blighted Turret, and Cryo Turret. Let's cover the class tree. We're going to be spec primarily into the top tree, Pestilence, and we're going to be leaning into long range damage on this setup. So we're going to hit both of those long range damage bonus nodes. Very nice. We are going to easily keep things at range because we just melt it before it can get close to us. We have some bonus weapon damage scattered about. We want to make sure we put a point into that little skull icon. That's going to make our vulnerable more effective, and we're going to get vulnerable every time we have apply toxic or poison status which happens all the time this is an unlimited toxic rounds build so we're gonna basically always have our rounds up unless we are an idiot and we mess up which you know it does happen so <laughs> don't judge yourself too hard i do it all the time other important notes the capstone of the tree does give us bonus weapon damage when we use our blighted turret that is pretty helpful it's 40 percent. it doesn't last very long but that turret has a really quick cooldown so that 40 percent is pretty much a permanent fixture of our class for our gear are going to be trying something a little bit different the gear screen collage will be at the end of this video but let's go over one piece at a time so you can understand what the hell i'm thinking about when i set my characters up on our weaponry we do have some flexibility here you can sort of use whatever you like we are definitely spec'd out for assault weaponry so submachine guns assault rifles double guns the like I prefer the Inferno Seed. I got a God Rolled Inferno Seed from the stimulus packages we received because of the launch day fuckiness. Pretty convenient, really, really works well here. On our primary weapon, we are going to want to make sure we either use Dark Sacrifice, Killing Spree, or Embalmer's Rage. We do have great critical damage, so if you want to use Embalmer's Rage to get kills and then have perma criticals for a few seconds, that absolutely works. Dark Sacrifice is my favorite because it just pumps out huge damage number. 75% bonus weapon damage is very fat. You can get the same thing from Killing Spree without the life loss. The only issue and the reason I don't use it is because if you run into an elite like an Alpha or a Behemoth or a Broodmother or Captains when you haven't had any any kills yet it's a little bit brutal to start the engagement without that 75 percent damage buff 
Alternatively, you could use the Amber Vault. Amber Vault has great damage output, and you can run Dark Sacrifice with Killing Spree, so the damage is fat. You hold down the trigger, it's got good range. Can't recommend it enough. Obviously, the reason you click this video is to see the Borealis Monarch set in action, so we are going to be doing just that. We are using the Borealis Monarch Crown. It's got the exact attributes we want, bonus firepower, long range damage, and status power is nice because that positively impacts our freeze, our poison, and our vulnerable. Very convenient. I personally love the mod twins. It is amazing having two cryo turrets because again, we do so much bonus damage against frozen targets. It's nice to have double the sources of frost. I put bloodlust on here. You can put it anywhere, you can work it in, but that is a great one. Killing shots are just gonna buff your firepower and it lasts for quite some time. This is where I get a little fancy here and we don't run the Borealis Monarch chest. That's because both mods that come on that are actually meant to buff Icicle Snap or Ice Storm or Ice Snap Snap whatever the hell that is, and I don't play that shit because the cooldown is like 25 seconds and that sucks. There's no point of getting the bonus for the critical damage after you use it because it only lasts like five or eight seconds, whatever, I don't even care. It doesn't even register. That skill sucks. Cold snap, totally useless. Unfortunate because it's actually one of my favorite skills in the games, but that cooldown is way too punishing. So here we do have some options. I think you do need to run toxic lead on this setup because you want those unlimited toxic rounds to stay in your barrel at all times. So I got that on the chest piece. On the slot where we can mod though, you do have a bunch of options here. I love splash boost. It makes it so our single target damage is better at focusing well, not a single target. <laughs> it's great for taking out groups. It spreads the lovin' around. Your character does great damage against single target. So getting some help when you have a nest of enemies approaching you is very convenient. In this slot though, you can run Kingslayer for bonus firepower after you get a critical hit on an elite, or you could run defensive mods, either damage absorber, or rejuvenation would be great in this slot to get a little bit of armor because you are super squishy and enemies at long range that you can't burst down fast enough because you're either myself with <laughs> terrible aim or <laughs> you're just being overwhelmed. It doesn't hurt to have damage absorber or rejuvenation. For our pants, we are using the Borealis Monarch pants, surprising no one, and these are great. They got our good attributes on there. I discarded the T3 mod that came on these pantalones because I didn't think it was that helpful, and I swapped it out for Euthanizer. We definitely want that 25% bonus damage against enemies that are poisoned, and the mod that comes in the second slot, Freezing Boost, is a nice mod anyway, so I just left that on there, and it definitely works out. For our gloves, my attributes here are a little fucky. I'd rather have cooldown reduction instead of close range damage but to each their own it kind of works anyway so whatever definitely want captain hunter bonus damage versus elites is always the best thing you can do get that on there and dumb dumb bullets because we want to buff our a r damage and the final piece of the borealis monarch set is going to be on our little feet and that's going to give us some max health which is nice we don't really need the bonus fp because quite frankly our damage is ludicrous so you're not missing much by not using the chest the cool thing about this set is that both the boots and the gloves come with very good tier 3 mods that positive impact our build so if you don't want to run the boots or you don't have the boots you can run the gloves the gloves come with shatter shatter is the 25% bonus damage against frozen targets it is amazing I oh, shattered those gloves <laughs> let's go and <laughs> took the mod so that ended up on the boots there and the boots come with sharp eye which is exactly what I would have put on there anyway so it's perfect that is about all the information I have for this build guide. I hope you found it helpful. I think that if you did, maybe click that like, click that comment, click that subscribe button, grow this channel. It feels so damn good to think people give a shit about these videos and it is its own reward in its own way. For my closing thoughts, I would like to say it is a pretty good sign that People Can't Fly are still working on this damn game that we all sink so much time into. I know many people quit playing. I know many people on the internet are like, that game's trash, that game's dead. Why would you play that game? Look, bro. I love the combat, the shooting of the gun, the building of the characters. It's all fun. I have taken some breaks from it, but I keep coming back. I really, really enjoy it. And I hope you do too. I think they're going to keep perfecting this game. And imagine if they put out some DLC. I don't know when it will happen or if it ever will, but that would be dope as hell. And it would bring a lot of players back. And it's something that I like to dream about before I tuck myself in for a little Betty by time. Anyway, that's it for this one. Until next time, we out.